Hello everybody, my name is Katrina and today I'm going to be sharing with you all of the books that I read in the month of July. I had a pretty good reading month in terms of the amount of books I read. Did not love everything, which is a bit of a shame, but there were still some pretty good books that I read too, which I'm really excited to talk about and recommend to you guys. But yeah, let's talk about the books that I read. I'll go from least favourite to my favourite books, so we'll end on a happy note. The first one I'm going to be talking about today is The Wicked Deep by Shea Earnshaw. So this is about a town that is essentially cursed. 200 years in the past there were three sisters who the town actually sentenced to death. They believed they were witches and they drowned them in the lake. But every summer since these three sisters have possessed the bodies of girls within the town in order to enact revenge and murder a bunch of guys. I thought this was such a cool concept and I was really really excited about this one and I think the atmosphere for me was probably the strongest point about this book. I thought it was really vivid and eerie and really did capture that haunted cursed town kind of feel but I, I really didn't love it. I ended up giving this one two stars and I was just quite angry about some things. I had some issues with the writing here and there like there were some cases of it showing and then telling so it felt kind of repetitive and I just really didn't like the characters. Um, the main character was fine, she just wasn't super enticing, she wasn't very intriguing to me, and the romance, as soon as the romantic interest stepped onto the page I was like oh no. I just wasn't drawn in, it didn't seduce me as a reader, so all throughout the romantic scenes I was just like nope nope nope, and I think the feelings developed super fast and I wasn't having it. This kind of disappointed me, I'm sad to say. I wish I had enjoyed it more than I did. Next I read The Battle of the Labyrinth by Rick Riordan. This one I gave two and a half stars. I feel bad doing that, it's probably a little bit harsh just because I feel like my reading experience affected my rating of this and that's not totally attributed to the book itself. I was listening to the audiobook with this one and I just really struggled to focus on it. I just, it just wasn't hooking me enough so I kept zoning in and out of the audiobook. I just felt like I kind of whizzed through it, what not taking too much in, not engrossed in this one. So I feel kind of bad giving it that rating. I might just not rate it officially on Goodreads just because <laughs> I, I feel bad. This is the fourth book in the Percy Jackson series. I am almost finished it. I will be reading the last book in August and I am excited to finish it and see what I think of the series as a whole but I just honestly think I would have loved this series when it was coming out like 10 years ago. There were some things that just did feel quite young to me which I don't necessarily think is a bad thing. I do occasionally read middle grade and enjoy it but it just for some reason this just wasn't quite hitting the mark for me. Next up is Mem by Bethany C. Morrow. This is a novella. I listened to the audiobook and again, I'm not sure if the audiobook was part of the problem with me enjoying this one. I feel like at times I was really struggling to focus on what was happening with this. At the start I was thinking that oh maybe it's just me not actually switching on enough and kind of taking everything in as it came and I do think that was probably part of it but there were other times where I was like I just feel like it's not explained in such a way that I'm able to easily grasp it and wrap my head around everything especially with a lot of the concepts going around. Maybe that's just me being dumb. It's set in the 1920s in Montreal and it's about this procedure which is able to extract memories from a person's brain. They're able to have these memories removed and in doing so it actually creates a mem which is a physical vessel for this memory. These mems kind of go around just like reliving this particular memory. They're not really reacting to a lot of the stimuli happening around them. Sometimes they do react to it, especially if someone from that memory is present or someone who looks like them, that type of thing. But they're not totally responsive, not like humans are. They're kind of like a living memory. The main character of this one is called Dolores Extract One, but she likes to call herself Elsie. And she is the first mem to actually have a consciousness of her own. Again, such a cool concept. I think there was so many really fascinating things about the story and the world and the implications of this procedure, bringing in a lot of ethical and moral questions, but it just fell a little bit flat to me. I think I definitely would have enjoyed this more if it had been expanded to a novel. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure. Part of it is that I wanted more, more from the characters in particular. A lot of the characters felt a bit flat to me and the romance I thought was completely unnecessary and I just didn't believe it, <laughs> to be quite honest. I wasn't a fan of the power dynamic going on there and it didn't feel authentic to me and it is put into question a couple of times especially with this power dynamic which I did appreciate but I feel like it didn't kind of expand upon that and just kind of lapsed into the romance I wasn't wanting it to be from the start so didn't love the romance for that. Really cool concept but I just kind of wanted more from it 
to be honest. History is All You Left Me by Adam Silvera. This follows Griffin, whose ex-boyfriend passes away. It's kind of about the aftermath of that and how he develops a bit of a connection to his ex-boyfriend's current boyfriend at the time of his death, because these two characters know exactly how the other one is feeling. They both had romantic feelings for Theo and they're both struggling through the same sort of loss. I went into this one not really knowing what to expect from it and I was really quite pleasantly surprised by how much more I got from it. First of all I wanted to mention that obviously we do have male male romances in here and the main character Griffin also has OCD so I thought that was a really interesting thing to see in the book. And Griffin was such an interesting and complex and layered character. Like I empathize with him on so many levels. He's been through so much and experiencing such devastating loss but he's not a perfect character character either and I really did appreciate seeing the mistakes he made and some of the things he did, some of the ways he treats other people isn't likeable or necessarily nice but it just felt so real and I really appreciated that about his character. In compared to the other Adam Silvera books this probably isn't my favourite. I'd give this one like a 3.75 stars, almost a 4 stars. Um, I did really enjoy this one. It was emotional, like from the start I was like, oh god, oh, my poor emotions, another roller coaster ride. I really liked how we get half of the story told in the present tense and half of it kind of flashbacks to Griffin's history with Theo. I'm finding it really hard to pinpoint exactly what about this book prevented me from giving it like a full five stars. I haven't fully processed everything, I don't think. I'm a little bit delusional at this point as well. I'm really tired. I think I really appreciated the characters, but I didn't connect with them as much as I was hoping to. The Book of M by Peng Shepherd. This one I listened to on audiobook and really enjoyed listening to that, so would definitely recommend. But in this world, there is this phenomenon. Some people have started to lose their shadows, and after some time has passed, they then start to lose their memories. This becomes a bit of an epidemic, and the world just kind of collapses and just doesn't know how to deal with it. We follow two characters, Ori and Max. The two of them, husband and wife, are kind of living out in the wilderness, surviving on their own two years after the first person uh, lost their shadow. And one day, Max loses her own shadow. And rather than putting her husband through, you know, dealing with her slowly losing her memory, she decides to run away and leave. But obviously Ori isn't going to accept that and goes after her. So these two are having their separate journeys and it's kind of following them along the way. I went into this not really knowing too much about it and it was just so much more wild than I was expecting <laughs> and I really really did enjoy it. I did have some questions. There were some things that weren't fully explained and I think they were supposed to be mysterious but also they were just kind of a little too quirky for me to fully wrap my head around and just accept. There was also a bit of the bury your gaze trope which was a bit sad but as a whole I did really enjoy this one. Such a fascinating concept and such just a journey following these characters as you know Ori is running after Max trying to find his wife and then on the other hand seeing Max as she's slowly losing her memories that was such an interesting part of this one. That one I rated four stars by the way. <laughs> Next I listened to the audiobook of Fight Like a Girl by Clementine Ford. I gave this one 4.5 stars. This book is non-fiction. It's like part memoir, part opinion piece and it's kind of a call to arms for feminists. It's really personal, it goes into a lot of detail about sexuality and sexual awakening and things like that and it's also really brutal at times. Like it doesn't shy away from talking the honest truths about the things that women go through in western society, in third world countries as well. Oh. I'm just getting angry thinking about a lot of the things that is covered in this book. Also like the ridiculous things that happen in the legal system when it comes to convicting rapists or not convicting rapists properly. Ugh, ugh, ugh. It talks about a lot of different topics like sexuality and sexism, oppression, being a woman, just living as a woman in this world and I have ordered myself a physical copy of this book because I would like to go back and annotate it because there were so many things that when I was listening to the audiobook and I was walking to work just with a strut in my step because I was like yeah say it girl say it so many things uh make me angry about the world so many things. I also read Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell by Susanna Clarke. I gave this one like 4.75 stars but I don't know it just really kind of blew me away a little bit. So this is a, a chunky ass book and it is quite slow in pace and does have a lot of descriptions but it just 
really surprised me with how funny it was and it was really captivating. It really hooked me from page one. I was really enjoying all of the long descriptions and taking my time savoring each moment and learning about these characters. Such interesting characters as well. For the last half of the book I was actually listening to the audiobook while I was reading it and I think that definitely helped me kind of take in more of the story and it was definitely a really good experience for reading this one. What this book is about, so this is set in like an alternate England in the 1800s where magic exists. At this point in time when the book starts though, magic hasn't really existed for a couple of hundred years. There are magicians but they're kind of theoretical magicians. They just study magic. That is until Mr. Norrell comes along and is like, hey, hello, I'm a real magician. I can do the magics. Watch me. And then just blows everyone's minds with his magical abilities. And so he's kind of like the reigning magician, the only real magician in England until Jonathan Strange comes along. And at first he starts out as his student, but then the two become rivals. The two butt heads become rivals and there's kind of like a little bit of a war going on between the two. It covers like the Napoleonic War as well which I thought was such an interesting part and in seeing how magic was used in warfare was really cool and I really liked the gentleman with the thistle down hair. He was such an interesting character. Very unlikable but so interesting. I get really excited thinking about this book. I really enjoyed it. Like really really enjoyed this book. Would definitely recommend. I don't think it's necessarily the book for everyone because it is quite long and cumbersome but I think it's worth giving a shot. The last book that I'm going to be talking about today was a five-star prediction and I can confidently say that I predicted correctly in this instance and that is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Listen to the audiobook for this one. That was amazing. Really, really enjoyed that. So it's about Evelyn Hugo, who was a starlet, and she's um, getting a little bit older now, and she approaches a journalist and is like, hey, come write my life story, which is an incredibly enticing offer because, you know, the world just wants to know all about the life of Evelyn Hugo and the seven husbands that she had. So Evelyn goes into her life story. The glitz, the glam, the romance, the not so great stuff too. She does shed light to a lot of truths as well and she is a bisexual queen and I love this book so so much. Evelyn is such an interesting person, such an interesting human. She knows what she wants and she does whatever she can to get it. Even if it means sacrificing things for herself and potentially hurting other people as well. She knows exactly how to get what she wants and she goes for it. And I really appreciated that about her character. She did lead a dramatic life and it was really interesting to learn all about it and I really liked the framework for the story as well, like her actually talking to a journalist and telling her life story and seeing some of the things that are happening outside of Evelyn's story. And I also really liked learning about this journalist named Monique, uh, her story. At the start I was like, yeah, cool, no worries. She's just kind of like the character to move things along and actually get us ready to learn about Evelyn Hugo. But I ended up really getting to grow to love Monique and liking her story too. And it was just fantastic. This book was fantastic and I would recommend. Please read it. She gets a shelf all to her own. She deserves it. Those are the books that I read in the month of July. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this wrap-up video. I would love to hear about the best book or books that you read in July. Let me know in the comment section down below. But that's all that I have for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you very soon in a new one but until then I will talk to you in the comments. Bye!